subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. Hello people, so uh, we have already looked at signals, various classification of signals, continuous time signals and discrete time signals in detail. We also looked at various time operations that we can perform with signals, how to express signals, differentiation and uh, integration of signals. So now we are going to look at systems. Now what is a system? Now see, uh, what we are doing basically is we are applying a signal as an input to a system, to a various uh, set of rules and uh, obtaining an output or response. So, the entity which is relating this input and output, the uh, this excitation and response is known as system. So, system is basically a mathematical representation, mathematical model of a physical process that relates the input and output signals. So, it is basically a transformation. Now we are having systems which can have multiple inputs and provide multiple outputs uh, but for now we are just going to consider a single input single output system. So a system can be continuous time signal depending on the input uh, signals. So this is going to be continuous time system. So what is happening in system is we are supplying it with an excitation or input and obtaining the corresponding response or output. Now to represent this system we are using this system as uh, we are representing it as uh, capital T or S. To uh, represent this uh, relation mathematically I am writing output Y as Tx, Tx which means that this is the uh, excitation or input applied to the system T and uh, correspondingly this output or response Y has been obtained. Now uh, similarly if you are having a discrete time system, so discrete time system is going to have discrete input, discrete signals as input let us say xn and going to give output yn. Uh, now see we are expressing these systems basically by the use of their impulse response. Okay, We are relating these systems, we are representing them by using their impulse response or unit response. What is impulse response? If this input signal is replaced with a impulse signal, simple uh, impulse, unit impulse pulse, then what is going to be the output of the system? That is how we are representing a system. Okay, It is just a way to represent. We are also representing system by uh, different differential equation there are various ways and uh, okay so we are uh, concent, uh, concentrating here only on LTI systems LTI is linear time invariant system we are going to look at classification of signals next so we are concentrating only on LTI systems why because modeling LTI systems is easy modeling uh, this uh, input output for LTI systems is convenient for us so we are going to look at the classification of systems uh, so we are going to learn about LTI systems, we are considering LTI systems only. LTI stands for linear time invariant systems and we are representing these systems, representing systems with the help of, with the help of input output relation, input output relation using, using impulse response. sometimes using step response or or differential or difference equation differential or difference equations okay so this is how we are representing systems right now we are going to look at classification of systems okay so the first classification that we are going to look at is linear and nonlinear systems linear and Nonlinear systems. So, how do we identify if a system is linear or nonlinear? See, we are relating this uh, input and output using a system, right? So, what are we doing to identify linearity of a system is if we are performing some operations, some multiplication operations with the input, then if the same operation follows in the output, we are saying that the system is linear. To check linearity, we are checking two um, things, checking two criteria which are homogeneity, 
homogeneity homogeneity implies that if you are multiplying the input with a constant then the output should also get multiplied with the same constant that is what we are calling homogeneity and superposition 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 means additivity if i am adding two inputs then their corresponding outputs should also get added simultaneously okay so what does homogeneity means suppose suppose uh, we obtained for this input xt applied to a system i obtained the output as yt okay so if i just multiply this signal with a constant a this input with constant a what should happen this output should also get multiplied with the same constant a okay so this is what we are calling uh, calling homogeneity this is homogeneity by multiplying the input with the constant the output gets multiplied with the same constant so this is what homogeneity is now what is superposition if for a input x1t you obtained an output y1t the same system if we ob uh, obtained y2t as output for a signal x2t then for a signal x1t plus x2t for a signal of this form i must obtain output as addition of their individual outputs i should obtain output as y1t plus y2t this is what superposition okay superposition so combinedly these homogeneity and superposition combinedly they are constituting linearity so if i just have to sum both of them in one statement for a linearity what can i write for input a x1 t plus a2 x2 t i must obtain output as a1 y1 plus a2 y2 t right if for inputs x1 and x2 output for y1 and y2 then for an input a1 x1 plus a2 x2 i must obtain output as a1 y1 plus a2 y2 so this is linearity linearity right if any system if you given any system and you are asked to identify linearity of the system you just have to check this rule okay just multiply the inputs with some uh, constant and add two inputs two different inputs and just check if the output is of this form okay so uh, we taking an example here consider a system uh, a relation like this <coughs> suppose y t is 5 x t now we just checking if this system is linear or not what do i do i multiply this input with a variable and a constant some constant okay and add two signals so what do i do 5 a1 x1 t plus 5 a2 x2 t right now what this uh, this should be this should be a1 y1 t plus a2 y2 t you just need to check if this is happening or not okay so what do i do see this this signal when given as an whole what can i write it as so this is something of the form this is something of the form this only we have replaced xt with this one okay so the output is going to be output when you apply this signal the output is going to be some y dash t right some y dash t now just verify if this is going to be equal to this if i apply only 5a1 x1 if i have applied only 5a1 x1 to this system what is going to be the output if i am multiplying a here this is also going to get multiplied with a so for 5a1 x1 t output is going to be a1 y1 t for 5a2 x2 t output is going to be a2 y2 t if you just add these if you just uh, uh, if apply these combinedly output is going to be this only so this system is a linear system this is how we are checking linearity okay uh, now we are considering one more example of the same form if the system uh, if we are considering the same system okay i am just adding a constant to this suppose we are having a system yt is equal to 5 xt plus 9 now see this Uh, addition of constant is going to create problem in linearity. Why? 
if I am considering uh, an input a1 x1t what is going to be the output if I am applying this input output is going to be 5 a1 x1t plus 9 okay this is y1t right this is this is the output of the system now if I am applying a2 x2t output is going to be 5 a2 x2t plus 9 this is y2t now if I just add both of them if I just find uh, y1t plus y2t what do I obtain 5 a1 x1t plus 5 a2 x2t plus 18 whereas if I apply these signals combinedly to this system what should have I obtained I must have obtained 5 only in place of xt I am going to keep these signals right a1 x1t plus a2 x2t plus 9 but instead of obtaining this I obtained this I obtained 18 which means that this system is non-linear it is non-linear okay so this is we are having uh, we can check linearity of a system right so the next classification that we are going to look at is time invariant and variant systems time invariant and variant systems now see if the output does not change does not depend on instance of applying the input it does it remains constant whenever the input is applied then we are saying that the system is time invariant it does not vary with time okay but if that does not happen we are saying that the system is time variant right so uh, what I am saying is if for an input xt I am obtaining an output yt so this should remain same this is any system t right so this should remain same at all points of time that is if I shift this signal if I shift this signal by t naught this output should also get shifted by t naught right if this happens if this happens in a system then the system is known as time invariant system so I've already told you we are interested in linear and time invariant systems okay so we're checking time invariancy by shifting the input by t naught and see if the corresponding output also shifts by the same amount or not okay uh, so look at an example of for this suppose we are having yt is equal to so we considering uh, the previous example first right now see if I just shift this signal by t naught what does this become it is going to become 5 x t minus t naught now since then in this argument only t is present if I shift it by t naught this output is also going to shift by t naught also going to shift by t naught so this system is going to be time invariant system uh, now we are considering one more example suppose we have got a system something like this ok t of x t square so uh, what are we going to do firstly I am going to obtain x of t minus t naught which is going to be uh, I am calling this uh, signal as something ok let us call it x1 t so this is going to be x of t square minus t naught y because we are just providing a shift of t naught ok we are just providing a shift of t naught here so this is going to be x of t square minus t naught now if I find y of t minus t naught what happens now see since I have changed the argument ok I have changed the complete argument I have replaced t with t minus t naught so the same thing happens here also this is going to become x of t minus t naught whole square now see clearly x1 t is not equal to this signal ok these two signals are not equivalent here we are having inside the argument we are having t square minus t naught whereas here we are having t minus t naught whole square since they are not equal since shifted version of the signal is not equal to shifted version of the output so this signal is going to be time variant time variant right so uh, this is how we are checking time invariance we are going to shift the input by t naught correspondingly we are going to shift the output by t naught and check if both the signals are equal fine so this is how we are checking time invariance ok so the next classification that we are looking at is causal and non causal systems causal and non causal system 
Now what is a causal system? What is a non-causal system? Any system in which cause is already available. What is cause? The excitation, the input. If the cause is already available, then we are saying that the system is causal system. If this cause is not available, if the input is not available, we are referring it to as non-causal system. Now, what is happening in a non-causal system is this system is going to be anticipatory in nature. What is anticipatory? The future values, future inputs have to be anticipated have to be guessed okay they are not available right now they are going to occur in future if we are having some input of the form which is which uh, whose value is not available right now in the present then it, and it is going to be available in the future we are referring it to as a non-causal system so if a system is having signals inputs of the form xt or xt minus t naught which means inputs occurring in present or the inputs which have occurred in past then we are saying that the system that causal so i can say that if yt is a function of signals of form xt minus t naught where this t naught can be zero or greater than zero then the system is going to be a causal system causal system whereas if you are having inputs of the form inputs of form x of t plus t naught t plus t naught means they are going to occur somewhere in future okay this is anticipatory anticipatory not occurred yet right then the system is going to be non-causal now these non-causal systems are not realizable physically okay they cannot be realized they cannot be mathematically modeled physically unrealizable since the input is not available right now so you cannot model them you cannot realize them causal systems are physically realizable okay uh, so all the systems that we're going to look at are going to be causal system now see these uh, non-causal systems also uh, become to be physically realizable they can also be realized physically if the input is in recorded form okay if the input if the future input can be accessed in the present that is if the input is in a recorded form we can realize them also okay but uh, in general speaking generally these systems are going to be physically realizable we're going to look at causal systems only uh, we're going to look at some examples now Okay, so we'll look at these systems. We're going to look at them one by one, all the examples. Fine. Uh, so look at the first example. Now the system is depending on the input values which have already occurred in the past. Okay, t minus two means right shifting or time delay. So these values have already occurred in past. Okay, so this system is going to be a causal system. Causal system why? Because it depends on values of input which have already occurred in past. Look at this example now. Uh, this is argument of log okay this is complete argument of log now these values this is this argument consists of t plus 2 which means that these values this signal values are going to occur in future they are time advanced they are going to occur somewhere in future right now we are not having them since output depends on such values this system is going to be non-causal non-causal now look at this one see do not get confused by t plus 2 here okay we are concerned only with the argument of our function argument of our input signal okay inside the argument inside the argument of the signal input we are having t minus 2 which means that uh, values already occurred in the past so we are not concerned okay this is only in multiplication with the signal this t plus 2 is not going to affect this okay only argument should have values which have occurred in the past or in the present so this is going to be a causal system causal system now see we are having x of minus t here what happens in this signal is when i try to calculate value for t is equal to 1 now y of 1 is going to depend on x of minus 1 t of 2 y of 2 is going to depend on x of minus 2 
values of the past the, these values or these see x of minus and x of minus 2 these are representing values of future okay positive t values means values of past zero value of t means value of present these values x of minus 1 minus 2 they are representing values of future now uh, output for some instances of time are depending on input of future the input that is going to come somewhere in future that is why this function is going to be non-causal non-causal okay and then last option is x of a t now we have uh, scaled this time uh, this argument with some uh, constant a since we are not very sure of this uh, a if a is only positive we are not we do not have any problem this is going to be a causal system but since it is not clarified in the question we are going to classify it as non-causal why because a can be a can be less than 0 a can be less than 0 which is going to make it a something of this form and make it non-causal so this is how we are classifying causal and non-causal systems